<laughs> so, do you like Star Wars? Hi, I'm and if you found yourself watching this chomp down review, you must be down with Star Wars. Today, I'm not here to judge or critique, but there is something about Star Wars The Force Awakens other than the whole plot that is extremely reminiscent of the older movies. Both the original trilogy and the prequels do something so well whether you like them or not, and that is the way that they use color. Color is extremely important in visual storytelling and every director knows this, but the way that it's been done in Star Wars over the years since even the the beginning of the movies has always been masterful. The color in these movies can be used in such a beautiful, artistic way that helps to convey things like scale or emotion to the audience, similar in each movie, even mirroring itself in scenes that do the same thing. Well, George Lucas really put it best when he said, Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. Welcome to Spoiler City, this is Chompdown Reviews. To start off simply, Star Wars is always really two factions going at it. And we always know which side is which easiest by looking for which colors they use. Whether the color on their uniforms or the color of their blasters, the Empire always being green and the Rebels always using red, until it starts getting switched around and things start getting convoluted. But that is completely opposite to the war that goes on beneath the surface, between good and evil. The two ideologies are called the dark side and the light side, both colors. Though the two forces have extreme differences, they could also, just like the factions, be confused for each other. They use the same weapons, the force is basically the same on the each side except for the lightning, but the easiest way to tell the difference is the way that they use colors on each character. And what is the easiest way to tell if someone is a Jedi or a Sith? Not by costume, because as we all know, Sith are very deceptive in that way. But the real difference is always the color of their lightsabers. While the Jedis can really express themselves through the weapon's color, all the Sith seem to have red lightsabers. There are various reasons why certain Jedis would have certain color lightsabers based on the lore. Different colored crystals inside of the saber power the weapon, and the different colors can power up certain aspects of the user's powers. Basically like power-ups in a video game essentially, choosing your build. But I'm gonna try to focus more on how they're used for storytelling, rather than what each character would use based on lore. While the Jedi have rules, they're also faced with temptations from the dark side, and you can tell which characters are most susceptible by the color of the saber that they choose. For example, Obi-Wan has a blue lightsaber while Anakin has a green one, and that may not seem like a big deal at first, but it kind of is. While the blue is a mainstay color for the Jedi Masters, there is a rainbow of different colors that they can choose. Mace Windu had the most extreme color, purple, which Samuel L. Jackson specifically specifically asked for so that he would stand out more, but he is also a pretty angry Jedi, and maybe that's why he has such a darker color. But this is way more important when we get back to talking about the green lightsabers. The first one we ever see is the lightsaber that Luke constructs on his own for the first time after the Empire Strikes Back and before the Jedi return, the fifth and sixth movies. In return, the sixth movie in chronological order is where we see Luke tempted by his father, the Emperor, and the dark side the most. And it's reflected in the way that his lightsaber is no longer blue, in a way that his father took that color from him, just like he took his hand. In this movie, we also see Luke make another dramatic decision with his aesthetic with the color of his costume. He starts to dress in complete black as soon as the sixth movie starts. When he becomes a real Jedi Knight, he starts to be tempted more and more by the dark side and we can see that in his clothes because because well look at the villains all black all black all black every day so now i'm gonna talk about this scene one of my favorite scenes of any movie of all time i could talk about this movie for hours but i'm gonna try to keep it short this is the final fight between luke and darth vader after the Emperor tries to convince Luke to join the dark side and Luke fights back, it becomes Vader's turn to force Luke to join them. Through the battle, we see Luke become more and more like his father, succumbing to his anger the more that Vader talks. When Vader reads Luke's mind and sees that he has a sister who he could also try to control, Leia of course, the light shows us what is going on in Luke's head. There is a battle going on between the light and the dark, not only in his brain, but right on his face. Luke has to decide which path to take, and after almost going full on dark, he stops himself and chooses to not become his father. He chooses to stay on the light path, and only then do we see that underneath Luke's all black clothing is a layer of white. And underneath Vader's mask is the 
palest skin I have ever seen. Jeez, put that thing back on till you get some damn lotion, brother. The last time that we saw Anakin Skywalker's face was also during a battle in a shade of all red. And this will be very important. As a side note while I'm here, I wish Anakin's lightsaber had been green in this fight still. I mean, it would have been something cool to see in the longest sword battle of all time. And it would make it a little less boring. Now, in The Force Awakens, we see another father die in front of their sons, and we see a ton of themes mirrored that we've seen before. And a lot of people compare this scene to Obi-Wan dying, but I'd like to compare it to Darth Vader dying for a second. Because here we see colors being put to work just as hard as they ever have. And while I loved Han Solo, I love this scene. No matter how impractical these catwalks would be without any railings at all. In a hole that deep, that, that's terrifying. That is a work hazard and I don't want to deal with it. Seriously, I bet there are a lot of slip ups with how damn clumsy these stormtroopers are. But here we see another Skywalker torn between the light and the dark inside of him, straight on their face. And the character has to make a decision of which road to take. Only this time, the dark side wins out. And what we see the colors do is dramatically different. We start with Kylo Ren's face having shadow on either side, but a ray of sunlight in the middle, showing that there's still a little bit of light inside of this character. And when Han Solo tries to bring it out, the darkness wins. The clouds begin to block out the sun, stomping all the light out from the room, except for a thick layer of red that soaks Kylo Ren's face. We see Kylo Ren's soul in these colors. This is really good storytelling. The way that the color is used is so masterful because the audience is so taken in by what's happening that they don't notice the magician's trick and what all this red makes you feel on the inside, man. Just this change of dramatic colors, it does things. I love the colors of Star Wars and I love the color in The Force Awakens. From props and costumes to the way that the light of the lightsaber is shown on the actor's face. Abrams is an expert at mimicking the greats and he really took the color from the original series and the prequel put it all together and put it into his own movie. And with new technology, the way that the colors in Star Wars make you feel only becomes more and more powerful. Thank you so much for watching my video, and if you're a Star Wars fan, I hope you enjoyed The Force Awakens. And if you didn't, I hope you enjoy Star Wars once a year for the rest of your life, I guess? Um, if you are into Star Wars, I suggest checking out this video by Pablo Fernandez. It compares the prequels to the originals and just how their poetry, how George Lucas said. Um, it's a really good video. I really suggest checking it out. Um, and me and my friends just discussed the Rogue One trailer on a chomp cast that I made, a little podcast series that I do with my friends, and I really suggest checking that out too. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I couldn't thank you enough, and hit that sub button if you are into my stuff. Thanks for joining the Chomp Town, and I will see you soon.